Hey guys, Cam here from 9to5Google.com and Panasonic, right back at the beginning of this year, announced a brand new smartphone. Or should I say, an Android-based compact camera. This is the Panasonic CM1. We're going to unbox it, take a quick look at what comes inside the retail packaging, set it up and give you a quick first impressions of this device. And then through our testing, we'll eventually come to the conclusion of whether or not this is more a camera that's kind of like a phone, or if it's a phone with a very, very good camera. It's while opening the multiple layers of cardboard in this packaging that you get your first real sense that this really is more of a camera than a phone. And once you get all the top layers off, you'll notice that you have the camera inside its own individual cloth or canvas bag. But we're going to put that to one side and we'll get another piece of cardboard out the way and we'll get to the user instruction manual which says it's a digital camera. So there really is no doubt that this is an Android based camera. The only other thing under another layer of cardboard is the quick charge compatible wall adapter. But we'll put that all away and we'll get our first look at the device itself. Now on the top edge we have the micro USB underneath a flap and a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. On the left edge underneath another flap you'll find a micro SD and a micro SIM slot. On the right edge you have all your controls. You have a volume rocker and a power button as well as a couple of dedicated camera buttons including a camera on off switch and the shutter button. But it's the camera itself that's the biggest talking point of this device. It's a 20 megapixel 1 inch sensor. Of course it uses Leica optics and it can record in 4K. And this sits right on the back where you can't really miss it. It has a manual ring which you can turn to do all kinds of functions and an optical zooming lens. And the back itself is covered in this pebbled finished plastic, which you tend to find on a lot of digital cameras. But as for size, shouldn't really compare it to modern flagships, but it's 21.1 millimeters thin, which is about three times the thickness of an iPhone. Now other specs, in case you are interested, include the 4.7 inch 1080p display. That's about 469 pixels per inch. It has a Snapdragon 801 quad-core 2.3 gigahertz processor with 2 gigabytes of RAM. There's also 16 gigabytes of internal storage, which is expandable up to an extra 128 gigabytes. Now, once I updated the system software, I got my first look at the device powered on, and it's running Android 5.0 now, Lollipop. And it's a pretty standard version of the software, except it has a couple of Panasonic's own apps built in, and these are generally made to make using the camera a lot more like actually using a proper camera. There's tons of options in the menu for when you want to go and take pictures or videos, including changing the size of the image, the aspect ratio, autofocus mode. There's tons of stuff you can do with this, much more than what you would get on a regular Android phone. If you want to buy one of these in the US, you can find them on Amazon for about a thousand dollars, which is pretty pricey. In the UK, it's just dropped to 700 pounds on Amazon, down from about 800. I've been Cam from 9to5Google. I'm at Cam Bunton on Twitter. You can grab me on there. Tweet me, give me suggestions, give me your thoughts on this particular device. Would you buy one or is it just too much? for you to carry around with you every day. I'll see you again soon.